learn about the CPU when building a gaming rig is that it's the brains of every PC and second only to the GPU in terms of the overall impact on gameplay performance. So it should be obvious that the CPU is not a piece of hardware that you can afford to skim on. However, the CPU may very well be one of the most daunting and convoluted pieces of gaming hardware for novice builders to shop for. After all, there are so many different specs that all sound important, and if you mess some of them up, you may not even be able to properly piece the PC together. With that in mind, we've decided to dedicate this video to the CPU's spec sheet. Cache, core accounts, clock speeds, and overall compatibility, we'll be covering it all. We won't be covering the specs in depth since the video will already be longer than it usually is, just due to the number of specs we have to cover and the sheer complexity of the piece of hardware. But we will emphasize which specs are important for gaming and which ones you can basically ignore, just as we did in the RAM specs video. That's right, no longer will you need to abandon the dream of building your own custom PC in favor of picking up a pre-built one just because the CPU spec sheet is giving you a headache. So without any further ado, let's begin. The first thing you'll generally need to decide on when picking a CPU is the brand. The mainstream desktop CPU market is currently dominated by two giants, AMD and Intel. Intel has been the go-to premium option for well over a decade now. Up until recently, their unique blend of advanced features and overall high performance has made them the most appealing option for all but the most budget solutions. Meanwhile, AMD CPUs had a reputation for being a more budget-friendly option with higher core counts and a good raw performance. But they could never really stand up to Intel when it came to more serious processing solutions. That all changed, however, with the release of the Ryzen line of CPUs back in 2017. These CPUs didn't only make AMD competitive, they even managed to overshadow Intel due to their unprecedented price-to-performance ratio. Fast forward to 2019 and the release of their third generation of Ryzen CPUs, and AMD is now generally regarded as the better option for both budget and mid-range gaming rigs. And even those who disagree with this statement can't deny that the playing field is, at the very least, much more even now. So if you're building a mid-range gaming PC, both Intel and AMD CPUs are viable options. But which CPU should you choose? Both AMD and Intel have several series of CPUs which differ in terms of intended use. For example, AMD has the Ryzen CPUs which are aimed towards gamers, the Athlon and A-series CPUs which are intended for simple home and office use, and the Threadrippers which are generally used for workstations and servers. Intel CPU series can also be divided into these three rough categories, with the Pentium and Celeron CPUs at the bottom of the barrel, the Intel Core series made for gaming, and the Intel Xeon CPUs topping off the list. Now, it's obvious that you shouldn't use the simple home and office use CPUs if you're building a gaming rig and want the best performance. But what might not seem as obvious is that you shouldn't use the CPUs intended for workstations and servers if you're just interested in gaming either. Yes, they're more expensive, but the gameplay performance margin between the two will not reflect this huge price discrepancy in the least. So if you're building a gaming PC, it's best to stick to the gaming line of CPUs. This means Ryzen if you're on Team Red, and the Core series if you're on Team Blue. Both of these CPU series use the same numbers to indicate the quality and power of their models, starting with the number 3 for the budget options, as in AMD Ryzen 3 and Intel Core i3, and then bumping this number to 5, 7, and 9. Interesting fact, the numbers 3, 5, 7, and 9 are used instead of 1, 2, 3, and 4 just because they sound more impressive. And we can't argue with this. Ryzen 5 3600X sure has a better ring to it than Ryzen 2 3600X would. What's more, the letter I used in Intel CPUs doesn't really mean anything. They just figured i3, i5, and i7 would sound cooler or more impressive than the numbers on their own would. But that's enough trivia for now. Let's instead turn our attention towards some of the more important questions, like which of these numbers represents the best price to performance ratio. The Ryzen 3 and i3 CPUs are generally affordable solutions great for gamers on a budget. They're undeniably the weakest of the bunch, but there are still gaming CPUs that offer more than the likes of Athlon or Celeron CPUs ever could. The Ryzen 5 and i5 CPUs are more powerful mid-range solutions that are great for gaming and can hold their own with 
some professional software as well. We should also note that mid-range CPUs generally have no problem getting the most out of many high-end CPUs. So this is the performance range we recommend for most users. The Ryzen 7 and i7 CPUs are really only necessary if you're planning on running CPU-heavy programs. These CPUs are an overkill for most gaming PCs, but they feel right at home in the most high-end builds. As for the Ryzen 9 and i9 CPUs, just forget about them. You really don't need them. These are workstation CPUs and you won't really benefit from having them over a Ryzen 7 or an i7 unless you're building the most hardcore multi-GPU VR gaming PC ever. So now that you've decided on the manufacturer and product line, it's time to turn your attention to the motherboard compatibility. And this always starts with the socket type. So what's a socket? Well, in simple terms, the socket is the interface that the CPU uses to connect to the motherboard. Different sockets have different pin configurations and can even differ in size. So you need to make sure that your motherboard and CPU are compatible. Otherwise, you won't really be able to physically fit the CPU onto the motherboard. At the time of this video's release, all Ryzen CPUs use the same AM4 socket. As for Intel Core CPU sockets, the main one is still the LGA1151 socket. However, this socket has recently been revised, so it does suffer from some compatibility issues. This means that you should always double check whether your Intel motherboard will be compatible with your Intel CPU. Luckily, you have the power of the internet at your disposal, so you shouldn't have any problems checking for compatibility. The important thing is being aware that you need to check for this in the first place. Aside from this, all you need to know is that the socket doesn't affect performance in any way. It's just a matter of compatibility. So while you do need to make sure that everything's compatible, you don't need to pay any more heed to the socket type after that. The second motherboard-related spec you need to take into consideration is the motherboard chipset. As we've mentioned, the CPU interfaces with the motherboard via the socket, but it uses the chipset to communicate with the other components. In essence, the chipset is a system of circuits that connects all the different parts of the motherboard and determines which features are and aren't available. For example, the number of USB ports, RAM slots, SATA connectors and PCI Express slots is all dictated by the chipset. And the same goes for the extra features. Just by looking at the chipset, you could ascertain whether the motherboard supports CPU overclocking, multi-GPU setups, Intel Optane, AMD Store MI, and so on. So if you've got great expectations for your custom PC and pockets deep enough to realize these expectations, then you should carefully consider which chipset offers the best and most relevant features for you. However, if you don't care about these things, then you don't need to care about the chipset at all, aside from maybe getting one that supports overclocking for that extra bit of performance. And now we come to the juicy part. The core count is easily the one spec the manufacturers like to flaunt around the most when advertising their CPUs. But what exactly do cores do? And how exactly do they impact gameplay performance in multiples? In essence, a core is a processor. Back when CPUs had only one core, this was basically all they had. So you can think of multi-core processors as basically being several processors packed into one die. And the more cores you have, the better your PC will be at multitasking. See, the interesting thing about single-core processors is that they were only able to do one thing at a time. The way they gave off the illusion of multitasking was by switching between tasks very quickly. But does having more cores translate to better in-game performance? Well, kind of. At least to a certain extent. Single core performance is still paramount when it comes to running video games. But developers are definitely doing everything in their power to take advantage of multiple CPU cores that every gamer is expected to have at this point. As things stand, hexa-core processors have shown themselves to be the most optimal choice in terms of both price and performance. Quad-core CPUs can still run most, if not all, games, but depending on the type of game you're playing, they can end up hampering the performance quite significantly. On the other hand, octa-core CPUs don't really improve the gameplay experience all that much compared to hexa-core CPUs. If you're building a high-end PC, then they're great, but otherwise you won't regret opting for a hexa-core CPU like one of the many great Ryzen 5s or i5s out there. Also, we can't really talk about CPU cores without mentioning threads. Hyperthreading and multithreading are the respective technologies that Intel and AMD use 
to allow a single physical core to function as two logical cores. If a spec sheet shows that the CPU has, say, 16 slash 12 cores, what this means is that it has 6 physical cores, but 12 logical cores, or threads as they're also called. So in essence, these technologies essentially double a CPU's core count by allowing each core to tackle two tasks simultaneously. However, threads aren't all that important for gaming. Like we've said, developers are constantly finding new and better ways to optimize games by using multiple cores. But single core performance is still more important than multitasking as far as gaming is concerned. Having access to more cores, either physical or logical, is never really a bad thing, but it just doesn't trump single core performance. For example, when paired with an RTX 2080, the Ryzen 9 3900X CPU, which has 12 cores and 24 threads, performs either on par with or worse than the i7 9700K CPU with 8 cores and no hyperthreading whatsoever. And the i7 is almost $200 cheaper. So yes, cores and threads are great, but if all you're interested in is gaming, then you don't need anything larger than a hexacore or octacore CPU since not only will they be more expensive, but they may not bring any gameplay benefits whatsoever. The clock speed is a spec that shows you how many instructions the CPU can process. Clock speeds are measured in Hertz, where 1 Hertz corresponds to 1 cycle per second. So if a CPU has a clock speed of 4 GHz, that means it can handle 4 billion instructions per second. Pretty crazy, right? This means that raising the clock speed automatically entails better performance. Any program can benefit from overclocking, which is why it's so popular with gamers. When looking at a spec sheet for any CPU, you'll see two numbers related to it. The base frequency at which the CPU operates out of the box, and the maximum frequency that the CPU can achieve through overclocking. Keep in mind, however, that you'll need a fairly powerful cooling solution if you want to take the clock speed to the max. Also, not all CPUs can be overclocked and not all motherboards support this feature. If you want to get any overclocking done, you'll need both a CPU that can handle this and a motherboard with a chipset that allows this. All AMD CPUs are unlocked, meaning that they can be overclocked at your leisure. But as for Intel CPUs, only the models ending in a K are eligible for overclocking. Intel CPUs generally have a higher maximum frequency, however, which is why overclocking aficionados tend to gravitate towards them. On the other hand, AMD CPUs tend to have the benefit of coming with better stock coolers, so if you aren't looking to do any overclocking or just want to overclock your CPU a bit, they're by far the most cost-effective choice. Nevertheless, and we cannot emphasize this enough, it's important to remember that clock speed is not the only spec that determines the overall performance. There are many other variables here that affect this, like CPU architecture and core count. Some are even beyond your control as a consumer, such as the optimization of any given game. Some games simply favor a certain CPU architecture and there's nothing you can do about it. So while having a high clock speed is never a bad thing, it's not all there is to a CPU. Now if there's one spec that tends to give new builders a headache, it's cache. Why? Well, in our experience, they give more attention to it than they should. So how much attention should be given to the cache then? If gaming is all you're concerned about, we would have to go with none whatsoever. Let's elaborate on this. A CPU cache is a high-speed memory cache assigned to the CPU to make future retrieval of data and instruction faster. It works a lot like RAM in that it functions as a means of high-speed temporary storage. But since it's integrated into the CPU itself, it's even faster. This sounds great and all, but it's only really important for multitasking. So while more is better, you can comfortably put cash at the bottom of the list of priorities when shopping for a gaming CPU, or even ignore it entirely. Moving on, we have TPD, or Thermal Power Design. This spec indicates how much power a processor needs in order to function properly. It's useful for determining what kind of wattage you'll need for a power supply to get your custom PC up and running. We highly suggest watching our video on how to choose a power supply if you're new to this. Since it isn't as simple as just adding up the TPD of all the hardware pieces and peripherals. But we won't get into the finer details here since the video is already running pretty long. The link is in the description if you're interested. The TPD is also helpful because it tells you what temperature you can expect the CPU to be at when running normal software. Do note, however, that this doesn't indicate what the maximum temperature it can generate is. 
nor what the maximum power draw is. Overall, it's not a priority spec, but it's handy for figuring out how power efficient the CPU is and how hot you should expect it to run. And lastly, we have integrated graphics. Integrated graphics are graphics processing units that are integrated into the CPU, allowing the PC to operate and even run games without the need for a dedicated graphics card. They don't come near to the performance of dedicated graphics cards, but if you're pinching for pennies, they're definitely a serviceable alternative. Pretty much all Intel CPUs feature integrated graphics of some kind, unless otherwise marked. Basically, only the models that end in an F don't have integrated graphics. On the AMD side of things, the situation is a bit different. First of all, AMD doesn't use the term integrated graphics. Instead, they have their APUs. These are technically different, but they function the same. We're just pointing this out so that you know what to look for. As far as gameplay performance is concerned, AMD APUs blow integrated graphics out of the park. And this isn't a hyperbole. You can expect AMD APUs to achieve anywhere between 50 and 100% higher frame rates than the Intel CPUs with integrated graphics. That is a significant frame rate boost, especially at this level of performance where even a gap of 10 frames can make the difference between playable and choppy. Also, we know some novice builders like the extra security that the CPUs with integrated graphics provide, but you shouldn't place too big of an emphasis on this. Sure, if the GPU dies on you and you've got integrated graphics, you now aren't stuck with a non-functioning PC. But AMD APUs have to make some concessions in terms of processing power to accommodate the graphics unit. We've already said that the Ryzen 5 CPUs have 6 cores and 12 threads, but Ryzen 5 APUs only have 4 cores and 8 threads. So you'd essentially be downgrading your CPU by quite a bit just to make sure that you can get a bit of extra mileage out of your PC should the GPU malfunction. Overall, we don't think that this is a good trade. And that about does it for this video. This is everything you need to know about the specs of a CPU in a nutshell. We have separate videos where we talk about just certain aspects of the CPU in more detail, but this should be more than enough if all you're looking for is to decide on which CPU is the best for you. To recap, you first need to decide on whether you're getting an Intel or an AMD CPU, and then you need to make sure that it's compatible with your motherboard. The socket is the key part. The chipset is just important if you're looking for some extra features or overclocking support. The specs that influence gameplay performance the most are the core count and the clock speed. In both cases, more is better. But keep in mind that there are also some diminishing returns with core counts after getting past the magic number 8. The TDP shouldn't play any part in dictating your choice of CPU, but it is important to reflect on it after the fact so that you can get a sufficiently powerful PSU. As for the cache, more is ostensibly better, but it doesn't do much when it comes to gaming. Additionally, if you're looking to make full use of integrated graphics, then a good AMD APU should be your first priority, preferably a Ryzen APU. So long as you keep these few pointers in mind, we're confident that you'll have no trouble picking out the best CPU for your needs. It's been a longer video than usual, but the CPU is a more complex piece of hardware than most, so there was really no way of getting around this. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. If you have, you can help us out by liking it and subscribing to our channel. And if you've got friends who could benefit from watching this video, help them out by sharing it either directly or on social media. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, click on the bell icon so that YouTube doesn't accidentally sneak them past you. We upload new videos regularly, so the next one should be right around the corner. In the meantime, May your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.